Chris Walby joins me here on Bonfire Sports, looking ahead to the 109th Grey Cup on Sunday. It is the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Toronto Argonauts. And Chris, of course, you've got three Grey Cup rings as a member of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. This club, this team is looking for three straight championships. Uh, yeah, we are going to get into a full pregame show on Saturday, live at one o'clock. I'm live in the Grey Cup city. It's Grey Cup Saturday, but today on Friday, Chris, I want to get your early perspective on some of the pressing major storylines surrounding this game that have developed throughout the week. And I think number one of concern to Blue Bombers fans is the availability and the effectiveness of what we'll see from Zach Kolaris following an ankle injury suffered in the West final. He did not practice on Tuesday. He did not yeah. practice on Wednesday uh, or Thursday. Now we're on Friday and he is expected to be on the field in, in just about 35 minutes. Uh, yeah. And we could get our first look at him there, but uh, your perspective on Kolaris and uh, how available physically he will be on Sunday. I think he'll be fine. I think the, the whole thing is let, let's see where he's been, DB. He's he's played a game. He's had a week off. He played a little bit. He got a week off. He's a guy that knows his playbook inside and out. He sits down with Buck Pierce and Mike O'Shea, and they go over things. He contributes to the offense in so many ways that are important. The biggest thing for me is, yeah, it's an ankle. Will it be 100%? Probably not, but guess what? Medicine's amazing right now. You got one game left. You got all off season to heal. So, you know what? You take some pain pills, you take a pain shot in the ankle, whatever it's going to take. There's no way that I don't expect number eight to be on that football field behind uh, Michael Couture starting that game. So, no, for me, yeah, there is some concern that if he gets twisted again, uh, if he gets hit again, uh, that could be a different story. But having said that, as far as him starting the game and being there right away, I think that he'll be there. I just don't think that uh, – you, you, everybody knows his temperament. He's very calm and cool on the outside, but all the guys he plays with say he's very, very aggressive. Almost, he's such a competitor, and I love that about him. He reminds me of a Matt Dunnigan. Matt Dunnigan was the same thing. Great guy off the field, but on the field, it was he was a warrior. It was all business. No, you know, don't screw up. So, well, and that and that leads into the next part of the question is. These guys will do whatever they need to do to yes. have their body ready on game day. This is the last game of the season, no matter what happens. Yeah, and I remember there's a lot of storylines that go into this. I mean, obviously, you know, they they had a curfew, which is great. And a lot of guys go, curfew, listen, you got all off season to enjoy it. This is one of those things where you got to sacrifice a little bit. It's tough. Listen, people don't understand this. You're bringing your family in. I saw Stanley Bryant, you know, with his son. I see a lot of guys bringing their, you know, uh, Bethel McLeod Thompson. Uh, uh, you know, he basically has got, you know, his daughter there. I mean, so, I mean, these guys, it, it's tough because it's not a normal week. You don't get to go home and maybe isolate yourself and get ready. You're always with the family. You're pressed to do so many functions. You know, you got interviews. You got to, you've got to be uh, ready. You've got to go and have the team breakfast. You got media shoving a mic everywhere. You have a whole uh, orifice in your body. It's just crazy. So you know, I'm sorry, I love that, but that's the way it was. I, you get tired of it. And I mean, yeah. I know that the guys are loving it. They get a lot of attention and stuff like that. But it's a very difficult thing. More difficult than some people think, because I think everybody thinks the Great Cup that we do as fans, it's just a big party, which it is. But for the players, they'll party after the game. So, uh, you know, I'm excited for him. And, but it's funny, uh, you talk about Zach. I want to go and flip the coin on you here. I want to talk about this other guy that I've been talking about all year, does not get any respect. And you know I'm talking about the Toronto quarterback. McLeod Bethel-Thompson, to me, throws the nicest ball I've seen. I mean, he's got a spiral. It's tight. I would love the way he played in the game that he won just now against Montreal. Uh, no interceptions, protected the football. Now, remember, this team has only met once, July 4th, way back. Personnel's different now. Personnel, I mean, it's, it's a total different ball game. And I think the fact that, you know, Bethel's got his receivers there. Yeah, he's going to miss some guys. But I, you look at Brandon Banks, the things he did. Um, Henek Wamba, uh, yeah, they're missing, uh, you know, Winton, uh, the, the linebacker. But they got a bunch of guys. I just think that I like the way this guy plays. The big thing will be, and we'll talk more about this tomorrow, DB, it's such a key, protective football. 
The reason that Toronto lost last time, they lost the turnover battle four to one. Cost them. Cost them the game. And they only lost by one point. And now think about this too, boys. Boris Beattie misses that extra point. Otherwise, he goes to overtime. We might be talking about Toronto having a win. So this is why I love this game. We're going to get into all about 33 and coming back against his old team tomorrow. But right now, those are the storylines, I think, DB. It's basically the two quarterbacks that match up extremely well. Yeah, they, they most definitely do. And uh, as you mentioned, we will get into full pregame coverage, top to bottom, getting you set for the 109th Grey Cup yeah. on Saturday. We will go live here on Bonfire Sports at 1 o'clock. I do want to mention, our Football Reporters of Canada – here in Regina, we got sponsored by two fantastic breweries. They dropped off some coldies for us. Chris wanted yeah. to uh, highlight a couple of them. Uh, Rebellion Brewery. This is a oh, really love nice. That. Uh, love that. Love that can. Buckle up. How about this? Experience Regina beer from Rebellion Brewery. All right. Here, here we here. got a stack here. Okay. Pile of Bones. Also, okay, here's what's co- okay, here's what you know I collect beer cans. To these guys. I collect beers. I like them full, though. You're going to have to, hey, DB, that's, there's your mission for me, brother. You got to bring me some beer back. I'll do what I I can. I don't want a ton of what, I just like one of each kind like that. Oh, look at that. Bunny hug. Oh, I like that, man. You know what? And that, it's all micro breweries that I'm seeing right here. It is. Which is great. Shout out to them and and thanks for keeping us hydrated during the week. We need to get a micro brewery on our side uh, when we do this game, uh, you know, do our broadcast. Oh, we will. We, we will. will next year. We'll, next year. We'll, we'll be telling uh, you about Shannon's we'll Irish sure we get where you can go take in the game on Sunday uh, back in Winnipeg if you're not here in Regina. Uh, great spot to be, but we'll get into a lot more, yeah. uh, including that tomorrow on game day, Winnipeg. Be sure to join us then. Chris, appreciate your time. I'm Thank doing the buddy. best I can to sleep and eat and get everything I can done uh, with a hectic week here, but there is so much more coming to Bonfire Sports, Amen. so keep it locked. We've got you covered uh, top to bottom. Uh, final thought from you, Chris, uh, with game day, uh, pregame tomorrow, uh, and the game 48 hours away, Like, like, what kind of feelings are you having um, you know, now, now that you're a retired player, a retired legend, uh, you know, with, with the game just a, a couple days away and then this franchise looking to make history with a potential three P. Well, I think I'll just say this. I think it's, it's fantastic. Uh, I think I'm just going to end it with this cause we're going to get into the, uh, everybody tomorrow. I just like to extend my congratulations to all the guys that were up for awards yesterday, the winners and the guys that were runner-ups. Because, listen, there's no losers in this category. I've been a runner-up a couple times as well. Uh, but I got to give you know kudos to the Bombers and, and especially the head guy, Michael Shea. I thought he was very eloquent at the podium, talking about family, the importance uh, of it, and you know all the guys that won. But uh, kudos to the Bombers. And I know that's the thing you want to have. You want to kind of say awards are great. But the hardware is better. And that's the big thing they're going after. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'll get into this more with you tomorrow, DB, and we'll really wrap it up. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. We will see you then. Keep it locked here to Bonfire Sports and bonfiresports.ca. And we will see you again ahead of the 109th Grey Cup here in Regina.